news and hang out with us on Discord. We are on there. We have a shiny new Discord, and that's tiny URL mhobo inc discord no uh no spaces no caps just that's you it tell me about the new discord why am i not allowed on this new discord carol carol no! why are you banning people from this new discord it, not it, it, us? kyle kyle it, it, it's, it's the old discord just shiny and new oh. <laughs> You've already defiled it, Kyle. You've already defiled that Discord, so. Damn, Skippy, I did. <laughs> feel free, I was going to say, feel free, please come and join us and talk about, we could talk about games, or the games we play, or you could put suggestions up for uh, Between the Roles. We would love to know uh, different topics that you'd like to see covered. Um, otherwise, it's just us who's coming up with the topics. Stop uh, it. Uh, topics are amazing. Stop into Beaverhausen's House of Beaver, where I'm posting pictures of the beaver all week long. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I have a, I have a page on, basically, I have a channel in there. Kyle's got a channel in there. God knows if he'll ever do anything with it. And yes, Blake oh. has Beaverhausen's House of Beavers. Um, so please join us there, and I don't think you'll be bored or disappointed. And right now, everyone's stuck at home, so except for apparently me. I'm stuck going to work. Go uh, yourself. Don't confuse it with Blake's other uh, Discord channel that's House of Beaver. It's the Justin Bieber <laughs> fan. <laughs> oh, 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 you missed the one where, where we decided to kill that lady boy, didn't you? <laughs> no, I did not. I did not see that one. So, all right. So I'm going to have everyone introduce themselves. I'm going to start with, let's see, I guess I'll start with David, since you're on my screen right now. David, introduce yourself, or tell everyone a little about yourself, since I already said who you are. <laughs> well, my name is David, and I am a fairly new player to D&D, &D, only 18 months, really. <laughs> uh, writing, writing background in college, so I'm taking a crack at uh, writing for uh, tabletop RPGs now. And... Uh, been a hobo for a few weeks, so enjoying it. <laughs> We're glad you joined us. And let's see, next up, I think I'll go with uh, Blake. Blake, uh, uh, tell everyone a little about yourself. Uh, first of all, David, you said it wrong. You're supposed to be saying you've been playing with Frank for a couple weeks now. Ah! He loves it when you, loves it when you qualify it that way. Sure. But, uh, I, I'm Blake. I uh, am... Is a semi regular, but who's irregular here? Uh, I'm usually the crude one, but tonight I'm probably actually going to be the serious one because I really love tonight's topic. <laughs> Me too. Is that all? Anything else? Boy, he's Puss really pussy funny. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> And and he has Beaven Houses House of Beavers. That is his channel, and he needs to put more pictures of Beaven. I, I will be posting. I will be posting. Pro, profuse beaver, just just beaver coming out of the wazoo. Beaver galore, huh? And last but not least, not to be confused with pussy galore, who was a James Bond girl? Unfortunately, we got the news today about her, and I am so sad. So, Died. She just yeah. passed away like last night. Yeah, yeah, That's really weird. sad. First Bond girl. So, so last oh, well. but not least is Kyle. If he's awake and paying attention, Kyle, tell everyone a little about yourself. I Boys. made a mess. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Hi, I'm Kyle, and uh, I wasn't setting things on fire. It's okay. Um, <laughs> Cloud of smoke goes by him. <laughs> no one knows anything. Um, I was supposed to introduce myself i'm kyle um i am now one of those people stuck at home so i have more time to write things which i might uh but chances are i'll just be picking boogery noses uh, your own or your kids my, oh my kids <laughs> the nine-year-old just gets these really big ones and oh. <laughs> I, I was going to say for for leisure or sustenance <laughs> Depends on which one we're talking about. Fair Leisure enough. for the young one, sustenance for the older one, because I don't want to see it. 
Oh my God, you guys are gross. So, so Kyle, you know, it's only been like, what, two days of being quarantined. It's, you know, you, yeah, typically you don't lose your mind until you've been quarantined to about, for about a week. So have to lose your mind after. Start, starting a little early there. You have to have a mind before quarantine to lose it. There we go. Yeah, got it. Sure, I didn't leave it outside of the house somewhere. Uh, we actually uh, went on a three-mile walk, my two-year-old and I. I got the uh, sunburn because I was trying to keep him out of the sun, and he kept oh. jumping the lake. You're a good dad. I'm going so, to burn them all later on. So I'll cut right to it. The first topic, of course, we like to talk about our games that we played last week. And at the moment, we have, well, actually, we only have one more game than we normally do. Um, but we've been running more games because, let's face it, it said people are stuck at home and they're bored. So we want to give people more people the opportunity to play, which, you know, I'll just put the plug right in here. Um, if you want to play, hit us up on, on Twitter. Um, you can always message DM uh, M Hobo Inc. Uh, you can always hit us up on Discord. Say, hey, you know, I'd like to play one of your games. We will be sure to get you on the email list and you can join us. But so last week we had three, we had three, um, we had three games. The first one, of course, Kyle has disappeared, but it was his what? game. The first game we played, which was Friday night, which was uh, episode 87, Swamp Kingdom. And Kyle, this was your baby. So why don't you give the recap? Let me find my notes on what it was all about, because after the <laughs> no <laughs> doubt. Uh, 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 uh. So fri Friday, Friday, yeah, Friday. Friday. Uh, uh, we ran, uh, that would be Caitlin, the wonderful Carol. The much better than Carol David and ah. the seductive Frank uh, had them run through a scenario that I had written. Actually, I th think this is one I had shown to Frank early on when I was first uh, writing him up. And he promptly forgot it and decided to fuck around as much as he usually does. Uh, but we sent the adventures into a, um, a long destroyed Nulumbo. Uh, kingdom, um, if anyone had been smart or knew anything, everything was named after lotuses, both the princess, the king, the queen, and half the shit in there. Uh, that makes sense. Flowers. Yeah, that makes total sense. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, that's right, because I had the uh, big bad at the end was a lotus call. <laughs> <laughs> I knew there was a reason I did that, as I was saying, Princess Tetsuda. Shit, I sound like one of those guys who likes to fan pick anime. <laughs> anyway, sorry, Carol, I know that's you. Um, <laughs> anyway, we sent the adventures in to gather a scepter and a crown that once belonged to uh, the princess's parents to show that they were indeed the proper heir to the throne um, after uh, a flood had taken over and lizard folks and black dragons and what turns out to be the evil druid who had caused the whole thing to begin with. No one had figured that out at the end, though. Uh, and it was my attempt to make things run smoothly. So our party faced off against a scouting, no, a hunting party of lizard folk, um, which they weren't very stealthy and ended up getting themselves in a fight and then having to run away from an entire tribe uh what else did you guys encounter the alligator gar but you didn't actually fight it uh uh carol's rogue Saw yeah. water something like that Wait, uh, what? and the party then had to figure out a way safely across the river with this gigantic gargantuan sized alligator gar um and so they ended up building a boat flighting in under the cover of night, uh, lucking out with their roles that they didn't know about and not encountering the alligator guard. And then stealthing into the kingdom, which was halfway flooded. If I had the map, I'd pull it up and show you, but there's an actual picture that I drew. It's not very good. Um, 
a kingdom taken over by groups of golems, which were former citizens. If they had chosen to fight the wood golems at the very top, they would have found the uh, former king and former queen at them. Um, but instead, they managed to go inside into the throne room where they encountered a druid with nefarious plans to load up the lotus golem, a golem that drinks in magic to gain power and heal itself. So every single time they cast a spell, their spells... Oh, <laughs> well, hey, hey, David did some of that too. I did a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> Most of it. I was like, all right, I have this guy loaded up. I'm going to let the druid cast some spells through the golem, which uh, was part of his nefarious plans. And I was like, okay, well, I'm never going to make it uh, back to eight charges, which was uh, the end of the scenario, potentially. Uh, but we ended up having to quit near the very end because I once again made it three hours after cutting out some good chunks and portions of it. Mm. But we were almost at the end. I got it next time, guys. Yeah, I was sad we didn't get to finish that fight because it was a very, it was a really good fight. It was very interesting and very challenging. Mm -hmm. and was, I've been playing this game for like 30 years and I like things that are challenging. So this was right in my wheelhouse. Um, I loved the Lotus Golem. I just, I loved it so much. Um, I love the mechanics of it, how yeah, you cast any spells, a flower would open up and it would suck in the arcane energy from the spell. Therefore, healing itself and then dispersing the spell. And I swear to God, Frank friggin was, was, was oh, doing yeah. it on yeah. purpose. David, I know, but David was trying, correct me if I'm wrong, David, David was trying to do, um, he, was, he tried to heal himself, I remember that. And yeah, I forgot about the potions, but it was just like, okay, I'm the only healer in the group. Damn, you know, because, well, no, I wasn't, but our paladin was <laughs> was not into the, was not feeling the heals that night, so. Yeah, if I can ask a quick question, as, as someone who hasn't seen it, Kyle, was it all spells or was it just arcane energy? Because I would, keeping with tonight's theme, I would have been curious if you would have I included... Uh, I didn't actually get the chance because the only divine caster, uh, David, I say bards are arcane casters all the way. Okay. The only divine caster was the paladin who did not cast any divine spells. Um, <laughs> I was probably in that case going to leave a divine spell caster alone in that situation. Okay. Um, but then there were also some tricky stuff. The way that the golem was written, um, it was a, a, a reaction to do those things, but I decided to kind of do it. It's going to do it every time it happens. It's not going to gain health from it. It never actually did gain health. Uh, originally, it was supposed to. It didn't uh, but because to. <laughs> I had it drinking in every spell you did. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. I thought you said it looked better at one point. No, no. Oh, I thought you mentioned it. Well, it was a trick of the eyes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's supposed to, any attack rolls, uh, if it sucks the magic out of it, the attack roll has disadvantage. If it's a save DC, it drops by two points, which uh, actually got David a few times there, I think is what it was. Yeah. Literally on the nose with a minus two to the saves. <laughs> Um, and then the interesting things were the invisibility spell that you cast, David, and then the magic missile that Frank cast. <laughs> because there's nothing in the book that says anything about that. And I'm like, okay, it's drinking magic, uh, and a first level shield spell takes it out. So I'm going to say it's going to drink up these magic bolts with the invisibility I probably still would have given you a disadvantage to attack you, David, because well, I was soaking weight. <laughs> I was soaking wet, and there would be an outline. So, yeah, yeah, a shimmering outline. So, all right, Kyle. As much as as I would love to, you know, we could discuss this all on Discord too. You know, so, I, we could, but I'm not going to go on yeah. Discord anymore. We're, we're stealing, I'm Carol's, th we're stealing Carol's thunder. She's saying every, hey, 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 this is my show. I want to actually get prepared for Sunday. Yeah. I'm looking at I'm, I'm I'm clock watching, and so I realize we got to probably move on because I want to get to the actual topic because it's it's well 
I know Blake really wants to get to it too. And I really want to hear what you guys made. So um, very well, excited. Well, th that. then you're in luck because I didn't watch my episode because I was randomly assigned it three minutes ago. <laughs> oh my God. Well, no, I you were next. next. So, so Blake's episode was supposed to be Hassel and Hymona, which was episode 88, which was Saturday night's episode. Did you watch any of it? I took the week off. I, I be just because we're in quarantine. I'm an accountant. It's tax time. <laughs> He's busy. Oh God! Oh, I didn't realize you were an accountant. That's pretty cool. Um, no, 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 it's not. But <laughs> <laughs> no, we need we need you people in this world. So, um, I mean, I did I did listen to it today, but I mean, I'm working at the same time, and so it sometimes it just it makes it hard to to friggin' really pay attention as much as I'd like. But Hassel and Hymona was basically Frank's interpretation of Romeo and Juliet. Except for in this case, it was Juliet and Juliet. And my favorite moment of the entire thing, and I'm just gonna quickly gloss over it, because if you want to watch it, watch it. I mean, if you haven't seen it, watch it. I'm not gonna spoil it. Cliff notes. Of it. But the best part I thought was right at the beginning when Juliet basically handed the PCs a letter and told them they needed to go, they need to hand it off to uh, her lover outside. And I believe they said that that lover was wearing purple. Well, their first thought was they made an assumption, folks. Yep, they brought it out to the guy who was dressed. Heteronormative as well. is not necessarily normative. Ooh. <laughs> And it was supposed, and the thing of it is, he was the bodyguard of the lady that he was supposed to go to, and the guard was not happy in the least that um, that this letter was coming her way. But uh, I said, I, I remember it was, it's almost like it was in two halves. The first half was like all the fighting and such that went on with that with that shit show. And then the second half, they actually were hired to go go burn something. Because what else is new? It's Murder Hobo. We always have to burn something. So as I said, I'm going to keep it really quick because I don't, I, I remember bits and pieces, but I wasn't paying attention as much as I really could. And honestly, if I spoil all the fun, then what's the point of going back and watching it? So but then the other episode we had was Cacophony Crips, which was Sunday, which was our free for all, where people could come and join. Well, the beginning part from what I heard did not go so well as we apparently had some bots join in. And um, yeah, I've been hearing more about the Zoom bots and <laughs> the, they've had to change actually their security such on how you let people in but Make but Joe, actual I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let go drawing to dave and everything what like drawing dicks and everything or no no i don't know what they're doing but it, um you know what was... carol don't interrupt let david talk it's his talk <laughs> it david, is his... go ahead i'm sorry for letting carol take over this <laughs> show from the very... shut up david it, it is your topic and you played so thank you uh no the the problem was uh we had some guy saying he was a hacker he was just a channel surfer burst into the chat room and just started saying i'm a hacker i'm a hacker fuck you dude what? you're not a hacker so <laughs> anyway so we ended up shutting down the the room and then having to start over again and unfortunately by that time it was uh just myself and the lovely carrie so we were uh, the two players that started off the evening in um, in cacophony, and basically how the episode started, uh, we enter this uh, town that is controlled by a criminal a criminal syndicate uh, who has the original name the syndicate. Um, we want, I was playing a, a rogue by the name of Zadar that was a, a changeling and. Um, Carrie, I forgot what her race was, but uh, anyway, we're both kind of roguish types. Anyway, uh, we make our way into the city. We notice uh, the automatons as we're walking in. They stop us at the gate, tell us the ground rules. We sign our terms of service agreement. Then we enter into the city. So 
Uh, first hour was spent, we were just exploring the marketplace, uh, made some purchases. Uh, yeah. I ended up hitting uh, the market and finding an armorer and uh, buying a naked lady uh, stiletto or dagger. And um, yeah, <laughs> Carrie joined me and she tried to buy a, you know, a male proportioned one, but no, didn't have it. Or if it did, it was broken and, you know, without that part missing, she didn't want it. Anyway. I, I was going to say, I think, I think after the fact, we determined that uh, it, it Carrie thought it was a depiction of a man missing the member. Right, but, but it was reality, the member. <laughs> yes. So, so size does matter, folks. Now, anyway. Um, so <clears throat> after that, uh, uh, Carrie witnesses uh, one of the merchants being cruel to uh, a cat that had hopped up at, the, at his, uh, his booth, and it was Cheese Bender. Anyway. Bender knocks uh, the uh, cat with a broom, pisses Carrie off. <laughs> so uh, she deals with, uh, you know, uh, admonishes the, the cheese vendor, you know, but still manages to buy cheese. Anyway, long story short, as we were making our way through uh, the market, suddenly the cheese vendor dies. Uh, there happens to be a sorceress that's in the market uh, by the name of Lady Uma of Thurman. Anyway, <laughs> she, uh, yeah, she zapped the, the cheesemonger because the cat was her familiar. Anyway, we ended up having a parlay with Lady Uma. She tells us that uh, since we're roguish types or whatever, and you have broken the law, supposedly, by stealing cheese, we were just trying to get street cred. Anyway, um, she insists that... Um, you know, to prove our ilk, if we wanted any work, uh, to take this one job and recover <laughs> a ring from the crypts of the cemeteries that we passed on the way into the city. So anyway, this is when things get interesting. So Carrie and I pose as mourners. We buy lilies from the arborist and we make our way to the cemetery. Uh, at the cemetery, the automatons are busy uh, finishing uh, covering a grave of the cheese bunker. So anyway, we're working our way in, trying to be as stealthful as possible. Hoods up. We're dressed in black. We're posing as mourners. We have flowers. I shapeshift into an old crone. The ruse was we were going around putting lilies on all the graves. So we we're going to work our way to the crypt. Uh, there's mourners there and stuff like that. We successfully do that. We approach the crypt, the crypt of John Cena. Anyway, we're about to, to go in, uh, attempt to unlock it, and sneak our way into the crypt. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> That's not me. I, I don't that know. I think someone was trying to do the nurse whistle from Kill Bill. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing John Cena, thank you. Oh. oh, okay. Now we get it. Oh, I I was I was I was going I was following the Uma Thurman thread. I'm sorry. Anyway, <laughs> so what back to the story. I um uh just as we're about to to try to break into the crypt, uh four gentlemen show up wearing pinstripe attire, uh kind of with a certain distinct uh dialect make their way into the, the crypt. Carrie and I hang back, wanted to see how this plays out. So uh, we follow them in stealthily. I'm standing at the doorway. Carrie decides to go all, all murder hobo and push me down the stairs. So, yeah. Yeah. So I'm down there and I'm, and I'm just like, let's use this opportunity to um, uh, try to make the most of this. I shape shift into a voluptuous blonde because the four gentlemen that came that went downstairs, I was going to try to seduce them to get them out so Carrie could go in and search the crypt and find the ring. So just as we're about to start that, Blake shows up uh, as his character Perpetua. All right. She's startled by no, seeing. No, no, no. I, I was Prudence the cleric. Prudence the current? I thought it was Perpetua. Perpetua is my changeling. Oh, okay, gotcha. 
So Prudence shows up, the cleric, and uh, she is supposedly uh, looking for grave robbers. <laughs> and she enters the mausoleum, sees me, you know, kind of sitting there, faking like I have a broken ankle or sprained ankle or something like that as this blonde. She questions me as she's questioning me. The four gentlemen start coming out. So in the meantime, Carrie was in the crypt, uh, trying to search the crypt. She ends up uh, locked in one of the rooms and, well, not locked, but she was in one of the rooms, made her entry in, and she has an encounter with some crawling claws. So as she's trying to deal with them and trying to keep quiet, we keep hearing something like tapping, like stomping on stuff from the back. Tapping anyway. At the crypter's door? Only yeah. That, and nothing more. <laughs> so anyway, as, as I am trying to effectively seduce these gentlemen, uh, Prudence uh, kind of ro- runs the ruse that there's perhaps a lich in the uh, in the crypt, and that's probably the noise that they hear. Okay, startles three of them. One of them is intrigued with me, <laughs> being the voluptuous blonde. So he was the only one that needed to be taken away. So yeah, I proposition for drinks at a local tavern. We end up going to a tavern. Taking one for the team. Yeah, I was going to take one for the team. Anyway, (laughs) we end up going to a tavern, his family tavern, known as Alfredo's. I, you know, immediately brought in, catch the eye, of course, uh, you know, the patron of the family and all that, all kinds of inappropriateness ensues. Uh, I, I believe there was pasta basically forced down your gullet. Yeah, pasta forced down my gullet, but I decided to make the most out of it and play into it too. So it was a Lady of the Tramp moment. Yeah. So oh, anyway, God. after that, I sneak to the uh, to the privy, <coughs> shape shift, change my cloak, come out as uh, another one of these uh, ethnic gentlemen, <laughs> and proceed to exit. Legitimate businessman. Legitimate businessman. And make my way out, steal, uh, the guy's name was Pretty Boy Floyd, steal his horse, ride back to the mausoleum, meet up with uh, Carrie and Prudence, who managed to find the correct crypt, uh, start retrieving the ring, and then help them retrieve the ring. The ring. And the um, part that I, you're leaving out is that Carrie had actually sold you up the river and gave me your share. Yes, <laughs> yes, but... Go Carrie! But Prudence was feeling <laughs> generous and said that, you know, she would be good for the three-way split. You know, it wasn't that much by being split by the three of us, but damn, it was a good time to be had by all. I mean, it was a lot of fun. I mean, when Bro- Blake came into the game, everything got interesting. You know, just so many ethnic slurs. It's just, yeah, it was well, a lot of fun. It, it was it was the interesting part about that was that I had n- I, I I had just gotten back into town. I had not been watching, so I didn't I was unaware of what I was walking into. I was just <laughs> is, I, I was told Prudence is walking into a crypt and it looks and there's someone who I determined to be faking an injury at the bottom of the stairs. Yep. So it, it was it was a very interesting dynamic. I, yep. But I think I thought we did a good job with it. It was totally Sopranos me jessica rabbit moment and yeah <laughs> the fun ensued <laughs> i can't wait i can't wait to watch the rest of it i said i got through up until you gotta watch it <laughs> on. um yeah I, I i said i got through part of it um but i didn't get through all of it today when i had two episodes to watch and i've been busy work has actually been busy in spite excuses, of excuses carol excuses. <laughs> hey 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 i feel you i feel you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was saying, if you're an accountant during tax season, I totally get why you've yeah. been a wall. Now, you guys are doing important work, so, you know. I, well, well, one of them. We're, 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 doing, we're doing work. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll go with both of us. No, accountants are very important, and it said in my we, company. We were talking about well, I like the fact that you were like, clearly Kyle is talking about my job being the important. Well, I'm I work like with you're important too. <laughs> yeah, Carol, do you assume that I was talking about you? I was talking about Kyle. No, just kidding. 
obviously. No, nah, well, Kyle's like, Kyle's quarantined at home, so he's not working at all, unfortunately. But uh, no, my company does medical components. So yes, it's important. I mean, it is important. And what's more is I'm actually now the supervisor right now. She took this week off. Look, She's got all I'm saying is this virus. I don't have to say, OK, boomer anymore. I was going to yeah, say, true. there's not going to be any left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Thanks. Hey, at least the, at least there'll be finally room enough in the in the workforce for the rest of us. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's not We're every, not, they don't uh, call us murder hobos for nothing, folks. Jesus. <laughs> so, all right. Should we actually get to the real topic? Let's get to our topic because, yeah, my contribution is about last night. Um, I mean, about Sunday. No, you had to make someone too. So, in fact, you know what? According to my list here, you're first. So tonight's topic, which is a continuation from uh, uh, between the roles from a bit ago, I think it was the last time I hosted, when we were talking about deities. And this time, now we're finally getting into creating them. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start, basically, I'm going to go around and everyone's going to present uh, their creation. We gave, uh, uh, Frank gave us a, a list of like different things that, you know, you should fill in different blanks to fill in, like the name, alignment, um, sphere of influence or portfolio. That's what it used to be. I don't think they're portfolios anymore per se or uh, domains anymore per se. No, they're, 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 they're referred to as domains. Hmm. Is there still domains? Because I was yeah. looking at yeah. Yeah. Prudence, is a, Prudence is a knowledge domain. Right. And I couldn't, I, you know what it is? All I have is my grave, yeah, like a grave clerk. So, um, but rather, it feels like though, rather than the domains being tied to, I mean, maybe they are still tied to specific gods. I haven't really gone to the Forgotten Realms handbook because I've done most of my 5e has been either this I, game I actually did some reading or my, or my, or my Tuesday game. Realms for this, for it is God. mostly unchanged. It is mostly yeah. unchanged. Okay. Um, but anyways, I will start with David. Uh-oh. And go through your entity and I'll add... Um, how would you use it in a campaign? And yeah, how would you use it in a campaign? Okay. Well, when oh. when first when Frank first brought up this subject, he was mentioning uh, a pantheon for cacophony, the the past uh, adventure <coughs> from Sunday. Thank, so thank thank I, I was, was going to bring that up too. These are all these are all supposedly going to be deities that are going to be incorporated into cacophony if we were to run that that that. Uh, oh, yes. So I decided to run with it. So uh, based on my experience of uh, Sunday's game, I decided to uh, delve into the realm of death because since we were in the graveyard and we were posing as mourners, what a better way to start. Anyway, I was running down some ideas on how to create uh, this deity. I started thinking since we were doing <laughs> the cultural background the theme of last night was, of course, from my ethnic background, uh, the Italians. So every stereotype <laughs> in the book, folks, we we went through it. Anyway, uh, hairy arms. Oh, Ellen, <laughs> anyway, I went through a couple that the book has specifically redacted. Oh yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> so anyway, uh, with that, I am running into my idea. Okay, with uh, from my particular culture, uh, we have patron saints uh, for for our religious sect, and that is Catholicism. So one of the things that I was thinking about, since we were kind of going with that angle last night, uh, I started thinking about about the patron saint of death, and in the uh, Catholic um, uh, lexicon and stuff like that. The patron, the patron the saint. The, the, the term would be dogma. Dogma. There we go. And in, in in Catholicism, the patron saint is Saint Gertrude. So I was just like, okay, how how do I come up with that? And uh, I came up with a name Gertruda, but that's not where I'm going with this. <laughs> okay. One of the thing we they call her Our Lady of Death, so that's the that's the key that I decided to harp in on. Okay, so I've created Our Lady <coughs> of Death, uh, the the 
the concept is coming off the Italian uh, uh, words uh, beautiful and death. And in that, uh, what it translates to literally is bellissima, uh, bellissima morte. So from there, I just kind of uh, ran with naming the, uh, the deity that. Bulim Bas Bulimia. No, no, close, but no cigar, Kyle. I mean, Blake. Wow. So, really? Yeah. Come on. Oh, sorry. I'm the good I, I, I'm not sure which Got one of us. flustered for a second. <laughs> anyway, uh, what I came up with was Saint Bella Morte. And then I went even further with that and started calling her Moriella. Okay. Basically, Moriella, it, her alignment is lawful neutral. Uh, with that, she is, I'm going totally Federico Fellini on this. She's the woman in the red dress, like in the Matrix and the Fellini movies. Whenever there's a funeral and a woman in a red dress sh shows up, you know who it is. Anyway, so I decided to run with that. Okay. Basically, uh, she's a goddess of death. So um, their symbol is, uh, I was going to go with skull, a skull with roses, but then I started to think, okay, black roses. So their symbol is the black rose and it, uh, their, their, um, their order is called order of the black rose. Uh, with that, uh, it's either uh, a singular black rose on a, a circle of red and um the the as far as the priest they're all priestess uh priestesses the the gowns are red fitted low cut gowns for the high priest with a black rose brooch in the middle uh a red uh kind of shawl hood that they can raise up you know whenever they want to act like they're in mourning or anything like that so anyway <laughs> Uh, the, the lower priestesses, they wear the, the black fitted robes and all that, the equivalent of the little black dress, pretty much. So uh, with that in mind, uh, men seem to flock to that patron when uh, they are faced death, okay? And they pray for the beautiful death. Anyway, okay, one of the things about... <laughs> Do you, do you know what the French call an orgasm? Yeah. The little death. <laughs> La petite mort. So, yeah. la petite mort. I've got so, a petite mort for you. <laughs> so anyway, the men of cacophony pray for a beautiful death because within that, uh, Saint Bella Morte will, or Moriella will show up to take their soul if she if if she deems deems them worthy so when these men at their time of death when they expire you can tell when uh saint bella morte or moriella has taken their soul because they die with an erection <laughs> and it's called angel lust or something like that uh yes actually it is it's when you get bitten by a spider it causes like priapism and you yeah it, but it is oh yeah there there it is a thing i i used to work as a mortician and yeah. I will tell you, it is a real thing. So the, well, no, the, once, the, once rigor mortis sets in, there's no getting rid of it. Well, it's not so much the, the rigor mortis and all that. What it is, is like uh, when we're embalming, we have to uh, tap into the uh, carotid or you're, you're artery. so much fluid through the veins. Exactly. Yeah. So next thing you know, it's like full sale. <laughs> so, and that's what we, in the, in the funeral business, that's what we would deem you know, angel lust or something like that. It eventually goes down. So anyway, that- Is that why they cover up grandpa's bottom at the funeral homes? No, no, that, that's, that's because they just didn't want to have to pay for pants. Right, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so I came up with, uh, with an actual practical uh, order, still kind of funny and all that, to be the antithesis of that. Not so much on the life thing, but still in the realm of death. Uh, this is called St. Jekyll. Uh, St. Jekyll is the patron saint of death of unfortunate events or funny deaths. <laughs> Basically, the alignment is chaotic neutral. And the symbol for the order is a skeletal hand placing a banana peel. 
So. Oh my God, that's awesome. Okay, the priests, I wrote this down and I just put fucking mimes. Everybody hates fucking mimes. So anyway, I'll, I'm still continuing with the Fellini uh, motif anyway. Oh so, uh, but uh, the, the other uh, way to go with uh, the members of the following and the priesthood and stuff like that, they are jesters. Jesters with, instead of wearing a mask, their fa faces are painted in sugar skull makeup. You know, some of them are female, some are male. Uh, anyway, their, uh, their artifact that they carry, of course, is a jester scepter with a sugar skull on it with a, a jester's hat. Now, one of the things that I thought about is this could be a patron saint of rogues and assassins. Uh, reason being because rogues and assassins sometimes set up the deaths you know, depending on how they feel, they could either be tragic or they could be funny. So one of the things that these followers do have, they have a coin and it's a two-faced coin. There's space on each side. One is a laughing skull. The other is a crying skull. So depending if the, if the you know, assassin is feeling flighty, he'll, uh, he or she will you flip the coin. You, you created two-face. Pretty much, yeah. And whatever it landed on, that's how they're gonna die. They're either gonna die you know, a serious tragic death or just something freaking ridiculous. So, oh. anyway, that's my, that's my deities. So, oh, those are pretty cool. I mean, Frank, that's, that's pretty good start to your pantheon for cacophony. Um, let's see. Next on the list would be Blake. Blake, what'd you come up with? Mine, mine starts with a story. Okay, good. I'm, I'm ready. Many years ago when the world was young and the creator gods were finishing up their work, one of their children was so beautiful to behold with skin as red as the morning dawn, radiant and beautiful to all who would behold it. She was so frustrated by the attentions of the mere mortals that were around her, that she, she locked herself away in the mountain. There she slept, undisturbed, unbothered for centuries, until man came along. Man came along and saw her beautiful skin. Man is greed. Man was not satisfied just being able to look upon it. Man had to hold it and own it. And man chipped away and chipped away and chipped away until there was nothing left of her. Hmm. The pain woke her from her slumber, her skin completely gone. All that remained was a wisp of white and this wisp of white screamed forth from that mountain, vowing vengeance upon all man. That, that formerly crimson skinned beauty is Nocinia, the goddess of vengeance. She is uh, particularly favored by merchants, scorned lovers, and other people who are feeling victimized. Uh, her symbol is a ruby earring because her skin that they stole were rubies. All of the rubies in Cacophony are supposedly from Nocinia. Uh, her hierarchy is a loose collective. It's a tribunal of three older men that as soon as one of them dies, they are guided as to who is to go fulfill his place. It can even be an uninitiated person, but they are drawn to him and you, you cannot refuse. If you are chosen to be the high priest of, of Nocinia, you are the high priest of Nocinia. One of the main purposes that she serves is that she is able to create, these three high priests collectively are able to create what is known as a note of Nicinia, 
it is an unbreakable contract. If, for, if you break it, you die. Uh, there are uh, certain people who seek out her aid once they have been wronged to extract just the purest form of anger and aggression and punishment on the perpetrator. Just as, just as mankind has stripped her away and made her nothing, she insists upon doing that to others. But she does have, a mor she does have morals. She would not want that fate to be inflicted on an innocent. If, if, for, if you do, uh, before, before going on a crusade for Nicinia, you are required to leave out a crimson cloak. When you wake up, if she has decided to wear your cloak to take back her skin and it appears white, you have Nocinia's blessing. If it appears black, the lady would suggest that now is not the time or the lady would suggest that your crusade is in vain. If you go against the lady's will, you do so at your own peril. Uh, I have some other things written down here. Hang on. Uh, her holy relic is what I call the sheath finder. It's an obsidian dagger with three ru inlaid rubies. And by offering her a few of your own liquid rubies in exchange for her blessing, swearing a blood oath on this dagger, if you seek vengeance on someone, no one will be able to impede you until that dagger has found its sheath in that person's heart. Wow. There are a, just, just how uh, uh, Ogma has the Order of the Silver Cord, Nocinia has the Jewel Collectors. This is a group of the most sadistic individuals in the town that are ordained and sanctioned by the church that you can go to to try and extract vengeance upon someone who has wronged you. They will make their life a, this is not a swift death, this is not a pleasant death. They will extract as many of those precious liquid rubies from that individual as they can to offer up to their lady. The, the tri triumvirate is often sought out as counsel by the rulers when deciding to go to war. Uh, because they are, because by, by, by being able to perform the, what I, what I call the, in, the ritual of the robe of retribution, they will be able to determine whether or not they're going to be successful or if they're going to have the Lady of Vengeance's blessing. Uh, she appears, uh, because, her, because her rubies have been stripped away by the dwarves and the miners and the man, all that's left of her is a, what would almost be considered a corporeal white smoke. Uh, she's appeared to very few people, but she, and she's generally very cordial and professional, but if you cross her, that white smoke turns black instantly, and you do not, you, you don't hear of anyone who's seen the black smoke. Hmm. I don't think I really have much else to go on that. That was a lot. That was good. That was oh very, God. very good. Like I, well developed. I, I feel feel bad that I went the comedy route. <laughs> so. <laughs> no, no. That, I, I told you, I'm like, I, I took tonight's yeah. assignment seriously. He, he did. He did. He really did. And I I like it. I like it a lot, Kyle. I mean, like, God damn, wow. Kyle, because I, I, I see I, your I, face I, on I, the I, thing. Us should be more offended. Don't be offended. I'm sorry. I'm just, just chasing the thing. 
Actually, anyway, one, Blake, okay, it was great. One I'm going to say here about, uh, you know, you were comedy and he was very serious. But that's one of the cool things about the show is the fact that different yeah. people have points of view. And we want to show, that's one of the things we want to show the, the viewers out there is that different point of view and the different well, way. Just because I say pussy farts once in a while doesn't mean that I can't be serious and come up with another <laughs> topic. Uh, and Blake, I know you oh, can be serious, actually. I I, I can, I, I've seen it. I mean, you're, you may be silly a lot on this show, but Written. but I've seen that side. And, um, you know, it's, 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 it's really cool. And that was really, really well developed. So, really so well. just just as a little background, do, do you know where, do, can you, can you, are there any linguists there that can pick up where I came up with Nocinia? No, I'm, that may be my husband. No sinew, uh, no, no form. Do you, know what the, do you know what the opposite of a placebo is? Uh, um, a nocebo. Oh, okay. It's, it's hard. Her name, her name literally means the harmful one. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. One of, one of the things I'm definitely picking up from both of you is that you had, you, you definitely did take some words to come up with names that were related to your gods. And I think that's actually, that's probably fairly common. I, <laughs> I to do it myself, especially when I'm stuck for a name. Sometimes it's just a name, you know, I just, the name, it sounds good um, or fits in with that pantheon. But there are a lot of times that, yeah, I will pick names that have a significance or related to a certain term too. Well, I, so, don't, I don't think it actually means that. I think that I basically created it using okay. root. Okay. That's using great. what? <laughs> roots. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So it's, you're still using another word, using related words as inspiration. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean. All right, Kyle, it is Hi. your turn. So which route did you go? See, she got it right. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, so in this case um i went with the lazy dm <laughs> of very open to allow for more um changes for stories to be built off of it um i think i only sent frank the actual title of it um but um what was the thing oh it was something of one the cult of many wonders the yes. cult of many wonders that's it yes um, uh, in which case this is a group of people who follow a, a wand of wonder, but it is the wand of many wonders. There's only one wand of many wonders and these people follow it and they believe that it is an actual entity. And there's so much belief that it does in fact allow them to have priests, the followers of many wonders. Um, in this situation, um, I forgot, what were we asking? Questions about that. Uh, it's all chaotic. Um, the domains are light, tempest, trickery, and arcane. Um, very free-flowing kind of deal, because at this point, you are allowing a wand to make decisions for you based on what spell is cast from the wand. Um, Oh, man, there's not really much I can say about this. It's fine. Yeah, no, no. Um, because I keep it very light, very thin. You don't have to think about it. You can easily pick it up and start something with this. And this was also kind of based off my idea from a previous between the roles where it's like, well, how about you make the holy weapons, the God, the divine source of power themselves. So if a player says, well, I'd like to follow this God. And you're like, oh, okay, what's his weapon and then what does he follow and it allows okay there's actually only nine weapons there's only one item and it kind of makes it easier to build off of and allow your players to build off of it um mm -hmm. but you could say that the cult of many wonders uh is a sought after cult by most um powers of order uh because something so chaotic believe they should believe should be locked away so you might have paladins who are trying to hunt down these people. If you're a follower, you very much follow it in secret, but, um, and the way it gains new followers, you could say, well, there are actually wand of wonders literally in cacophony. 
if you know where to look or if you just happen to run into one. And sometimes it just makes a wondrous effect and sometimes it teleports the caster into the depths, the temple of the Wand of Wonder, or Many Wonders, and you eventually become inducted and become a follower. Interesting. That's it is a very interesting concept. And I yeah, I mean I can I understand why too. You left it because there's a lot of story you can tell. And well, actually you can certainly use that. And this is also um, something specific for the DM as well. Sorry to talk over you, Carol. No. So you don't have to plan anything. Uh, essentially, you want to just get a wand of wonders and pick up or create your very own extended circumstances that can happen when you cast uh, a spell through that for your priest. And so if your priest starts praying to the wand of many wonders and then cast the spell through it, you can essentially be surprised yourself and see where the story takes you. Or if you want to reach in there and take a little bit of control, like, okay, well, I need to get these guys back on the path. So <laughs> cast a spell from the many wonder wonders. Oh, it's an arrow pointing this way, guys. Yeah, I know. We wouldn't know anything about that, would we? <laughs> it's a wand pointing that way that makes you talk like Foghorn Leghorn. <laughs> yeah, I'll say, I'll say <laughs> and if you want to throw it into, say, a Philbar campaign or a cacophony world, it is not the cult of many wonders. It is the cult of Volute. Yeah, Frank actually oh, just... There you go, Frank. Around. <laughs> you, were you, are you, you're watching the chat, right? So you saw the Volute uh, Scrolls comment on, on Twitch chat that Frank made. So I it, did not. I was going to mention it earlier, but... Uh, <laughs> brought that up and I was like gonna mention it um you knew I guess you have the right idea so so I know we only have a couple minutes left we're gonna go slightly over because I actually All right and so my final thought is guys that file shut <laughs> up I am gonna take freaking control so I actually um when I looked for a god in the campaign for Taryn I looked at that list, and this is why, where I came up with the idea of putting this as a suggestion for between the roles, is I looked at that list, and it was, they were gods made from a random, like basically a random generator, and they pretty much were gods made, made with a random generator. They, they, Sorry, they, 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 there was, there was, they, they created some very creative difficulties for yeah. players to overcome. Absolutely, but there was, but. I've always had her worship to a god of music and bards and, and 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 art and such, but there was nothing on that list. So I made up a god to go into the pantheon. Um, so I, I mentioned it like once, but it hasn't really come up too much. Uh, well, I'm not playing a cleric, so Taryn's a bard. But I did want to have that sort of religious thing uh, as part of as part of her in. in you know, this world as well as all the others I'm in. So the name is Lydeth. And I actually base this off of the, the, the god I have in my campaign world. Um, you know, it made sense. Uh, the alignment is chaotic good. Uh, the spheres of influence of portfolio are music, art, luck, because there's no god of luck for some reason, and knowledge. And it just seemed to kind of work. Uh, the colors that they wear tend to be purple and gold. Well, that's because I really like purple and gold. So I sort of want that. Um, the holy symbol is a little My trumpet. hometown colors, by the way. I was about What's to that? say, I'm from Louisiana, oh, purple and gold. Yeah. I love purple and gold. Purple, if anybody, you know, I, I will post purple, purple, purple. Um, my World of Warcraft character, she's she's got a heavy purple theme. And I think that's actually kind of where it start, got it started, was, was through there. But I love purple. And gold is the opposite color, so they work really well together. Um, the holy symbol is a little, a, a trumpet. As for this, originally it was for, for the god in my world, it's a trumpet with like a, um, on a field of purple. But in this case, it's a little trumpet, since I have art and knowledge also as part of it. So... Behind it crossed is a paintbrush and a quill. And then behind that is will be is a coin, I was thinking. A round coin. That's what it's sitting on. I, I, I'd suggest the laurel. 
What's that? I'd, I'd suggest the laurel for knowledge. Oh, that's that's a good idea. I'd have to figure out. I'd have to figure out how to put the two, the three things. You could make it a golden, you could make it a golden laurel. I'm also thinking about maybe instead of a coin, have have um um. Oh my God, I'm a fail artist. The thing you a palette. Oh, okay. I mean, you think I know what a palette is? Uh, this was yeah, uh, this was basically picture, yeah. this was basically the list we were set, and I was like, all right, I got to actually fill this stuff up. So yeah. some of it based, and then I expanded on it. The hierarchy of command. So there are priests and priestesses. Um, they are known as lore masters because the, the, more or less, I had to pick one. I originally had song lords in my world. But because I have knowledge and you, essentially the stories and stuff go into the songs and go into the art as a war master really works well. And the leaders, the leader of the church is the high war master. Their vestments actually are just performance garb. So or if it's an artist, if your specialty is art, you wear if you a smock type thing. If you're a performer, it'd be like a perform. If you're a lady or, or whatever, you'd be a dress, something like that. Um, one of the things I added to the list was where you worship, where are your worship centers? And of course, for these, uh, for this world, it's like a performance hall or an art gallery, or in a lot of cases, they have both. Um, I'm trying to think. So, so the rituals are all, they're all basically art related stuff. Um, opposing forces. This is tough. Who really would hate art? And I was thinking, well, and knowledge, I got, well, maybe knowledge would be the same gnomes that, that, that are trying to track down Dewey. I, I would, um, I would almost say the, uh, the. Anything for oppression. The, the, I was thinking, the uh, oh, oh, what's that, what's the class that's the, 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 the mechanists? Oh, the artificer? Or artificer. Or artificer. I was thinking more that bards and such is a lot of freedom of expression. So I was thinking anything that would really honor any sort of oppression or tyranny. Um, okay. actually, if you go in, in, in the history of my world, the, one of the big, one of the artifacts that they have as a main part of Terran's story in that world is something a tyrant created to silence the bards because they, they're the ones who go around and they spread the news and they are his big, biggest critics. So it basically was something to target bards. But um, so that's why I think where my mindset came with, um, you know, anything that honors tyranny, slavery, oppression would sort of go against this too. Um, so that's basically what I had. And yeah, Frank, I mean, there's certain things that I didn't want to answer per se. I mean, because it is Frank's world. And I don't want to, you know, I don't want to do too much, you know, try to affect it too much. It's his world. And well, well, well I, I, I do want to interject there real quick. I think that the whole point of this, this exercise was that it's not, it was to illustrate that it's not just one person's world. Right, right, right. It, it is a collective. Specifically for the campaign, because there literally oh, was yeah, nothing yeah. I could pull from that, that list to actually uh, have my character worship. So that's where it came from. Um, and so hopefully it'll be brought up more. And with that, uh, I'll go around for final thoughts. So let's see, I'm gonna start with, I'll start with Kyle this time, if he's paying attention. Kyle, do you have any final thoughts? Well, God is called the Cult of Many Wonders and Final thoughts, final thoughts, okay. Um, Love your God, actually. I know, thank you. I'm uh, an intelligent person and wonderful and everyone should be happy to be compared to me. Uh, that's more directed at Blake, but yeah, whatever. Um, final thoughts, yeah, you don't have to complicate your gods too much, but they should be open-ended. You should allow yourself to be surprised when you want to be surprised by them, in my opinion. Um, and just kind of let players go at it. I don't know. I don't think I said anything useful there. You should move on. To that. <laughs> no, it's it's one point of view. It is absolutely one point of view of how to handle it. 
And that's said one of the neat things about the show. You don't have to make it complicated. Just open the book to any magic item or just any item in particular and say, you know what? I'm making a God based around that. Good point. And that's good to have some sort of focus, be it, it, it an item is a perfectly valid thing. I mean, you know, I tend to build my- Well, God um, does have a, uh, a weapon of, or an object that a uh, spiritual weapon appears. Brings brings me to my final thought. I'll go ahead and- Go ahead, take it. Because I did actually build uh, Nocinia around the sheath finder, which I stole literally for, for those of you that are familiar with what it is, the SCP Foundation's 13 inch chef knife. <laughs> Hey, uh, nice. hey, like Frank was, I think, snickering mightily at your name, uh, Sheep Finder. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> Frank, will snicker, Frank will snicker at anything, but but yes, no, that 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 was the whole the whole point of that was that I I, I created this goddess around something that would yeah um, yeah Frank's only snickering behind his paper, <laughs> <laughs> but have- uh, because. I'm like, I thought that that was an interesting concept. And I'm like, well, what if, what if once you decide that you're going to hurt someone, if nothing could stop you? That's an, and, hey, I, and, and, and they built backwards from there. Hey, my name is Inigo Montoya. I'm here. You killed my father. Prepare to die. You know, he was of no, that same. But action. in that context, it would only be against, it, it would only work against the person that actually it would work against anyone, but if it wasn't the person that actually killed your father, you would die afterwards. And if you think about it, he pretty much let anyone go. That wasn't that person. You know, he would just, no, nope, no. Nope. Unless, unless you didn't understand quite the uh, workings of it. True. It's, 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 it, there's a lot of room for abuse. And <laughs> I, I, see, I see it having a heavy body count in the way of owners. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that's for certain. All right, uh, anything else? Or should I go, to, I could go to David. Yeah, uh, no, I, I don't really have much else, except I guess if you're in cacophony and you see a merchant wearing a red earring, don't fuck them over. A fucking man. All right, David, final thoughts? Uh, final thoughts, yeah. You can have fun with your gods too. <laughs> so, uh, like I said, I went the comedy route with it tonight. Uh, Blake's... Blake's uh, uh, creation with uh, his deity was amazing. I, I really enjoyed that. Uh, yeah. And one thing I do like is a good vendetta and perfect. So I love it. Uh, Kyle, uh, the... the oh, You're talking to me this time? Yeah, I'm talking to you this oh, time. Okay. You're talking about Blake. <laughs> Which brings me to Blake. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, Frank. Hey, you, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> he is pure girl after all. Anyway, I, I I love the concept of something being based on a magic item like the Wand of Wonder. That is that's great. I, I think that's a good thing to run with. Um Carol, Bards, love Bards. So, you know, the whole background. Yeah. You know, so so yeah, I thought tonight we we came up with uh uh, a wide spectrum to work on as uh, as far as DDs are <coughs> concerned. So, yeah, I enjoyed it. It was a great discussion, guys. Um, let's see. So, Frank, do, you, do you finally have that release, Carol? What's that? Do you finally have that, that release? <laughs> oh, we talked about pantheons! Josh! I, I imagine. I'm sorry, Carol. That's not the case. <laughs> all right so we'll try to do this and hopefully i won't get talked over because first of all frank will yell at me if i do not mention that we have bingo we have bingo for our saturday games please you know hit them up to get a card uh we did I, not I have think, a winner for every yeah. game what i think they're for every game i don't know the not for Saturday. I know a lot because a lot of the board and busters are very on the fly. So I think that's partly why he's not doing it. So, uh, but you know, Saturday, 
Saturday. Saturday is our campaign. Tune in to see what our play, what our characters are up to. We finally are getting to a real dungeon crawl. So hopefully, and, hopefully, hopefully. So talk my way out of it. I'll have to. Oh, lo, lo and behold, we get there. It's already been defiled. There's nothing left. All right, back to the back to the. Yeah, for once, I might not actually have, be able to talk my way out of the situation. I'll actually have to, you know, use my spells and abilities to help them fight. Um, it reminds me of the time that we were trapped in the mine, which was actually a wonderful episode. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. And, and I'm very excited that we're all back together. I've been waiting. Well, oh, yeah, Chris is there, isn't he? Yeah. Long. It's, it's great. Now I can actually interact with everybody <laughs> instead of just... Frank or half the party. Now I get to actually talk to all of you. Um, but get a bit. But yeah, get yeah, yeah. Neat, neat, neat ice chest. Orange, orange pop was was such a fun character. So much. I am gonna go talk over here. Hey, I got a, I got a riddle. How do you prevent David from talking over me? Be David. You tie his hand. You tie his hands together. Oh, that's right, because he's Italian. There ah! we go. Uh, see, you got it. Okay, now now I follow the, the logic. Okay. <laughs> a terrible joke teller, which is what do you get when you cross an owl with a bungee cord? <laughs> you don't My know. Ass. A what? My ass. <laughs> <laughs> this is why there's a channel that says <sighs> to put jokes in it about Taryn's what? Taryn's joke hall or something like that. It needs, to be, it needs to be Taryn. Taryn's dad's to hall of jokes. <laughs> oh my god. Um, where was I? Okay, so I mentioned bingo. I mentioned the campaign Sunday. I'm actually gonna step up to the big chair and I get to GM. Holy crap! We're gonna see how well this goes. Um, if you get so if you get a better group in your first time in the chair than I got in mine, I'm gonna be so fucking pissed at Frank. <laughs> well, I'm hoping maybe some of you Thanks will so sign far. up. So um, I'm, I don't know who you had for your first time in the chair. Or was that? It, it, let's just say complications. That wasn't the one from a couple of weeks ago, right? No, that was, I think, my fourth. No, my first time was. Oh, that's right. No, I know you've done. Was the before. Wizard of Oz one, wasn't it? No, 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 no. Frank, Frank ran that one. My, oh. my first one was the. Uh, uh, the battlefield. Love it. Love is a battlefield. Oh, that's right. Where uh, where, where, where Frank football punted the the prince. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, anyways, if you want to play, and not just that game, any of our one shots, um, and we've been running a bit more, said because uh, everyone's bored and quarantine. So please hit us up. You said either join our Discord and hit us up there, or hit us up on Twitter. We're at Murder Hobo. And if there's Hobo. not an advertised game that you're able to play and you want one, let us know. Someone might be free to run one. That's absolutely true. As long as, as long as Frank is, uh, as long as Frank is free to or carrier free to run the, you know, the chat, uh, the to run Zoom. Or if you're friendly, uh, someone will run something for you. You just <laughs> ask which one. Not me. It's so, than me. Unless you have five hours. <laughs> That's true. Yet the thing, Frank showed us all how was and how you can do it in two hours. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> so as as to finish up, follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, fire stuff, you know, uh, on Threadless and it's not crappy shit. I really like my shirt, and I'm buying two more things. It's definitely and, not and getting really good at those dice. Yeah, oh, so you put it for pirate dog magnetic. dice. It's for magnetic dice, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty good. Said Frank is Frank is on the line, even if nobody else can hear him. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, they're magnetic dice, so you can put them on your fridge and geek out your fridge. So please play bingo, and maybe someone will finally freaking win. Uh, That's not me, <laughs> David. He already won. I'm gonna to have to download a card just so that I can like 
make sure that that it's not David. <laughs> well, like, well, what if shithead comes back? <laughs> <laughs> So, all right, and with that, I want to thank you. Hey, Greg. Bye. 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 I'm fucking with my hands Bye. now, Carol. Bye. We're talking over Carol. Thank you for watching. Yeah. We love talking over Carol.